Welcome back. Well, there is a big showdown tomorrow night here in Salt Lake City. Vice President Pence and Senator Kamala Harris are getting ready to debate. The contest taking on some new importance with uncertainty swirling around the rest of the campaign, to say the least. Things will look a little different, too. Apparently, there's a plexiglass divider that will divide the candidates. And we're just learning that topics will not be released ahead of time, but there will be nine, ten-minute blocks. So in case you're planning your time and your trips to the refrigerator, <laughs> that's what you need to know. But I would stay glued to Fox News. Um, Jesse, let me start with you. Pence is a very good debater. He has years of experience in policy and politics, um, and he's been serving in this role for four years. That's very different from Kamala Harris, who has been in the Senate. She is a very accomplished person. She is a prosecutor. But in the debates that she had last year, she was debating people all within the same ideolog ideological um, framework. Um, they were left of center to the very far left. How do you think she'll do when she has to be confronted with an opposing point of view? Well, the bar is high because two-thirds of voters think that if Biden's elected, she will become president of the United States. And Pence is a good wingman. Like you said, he's a smooth debater. He's got policy chops. He's been in the room when every decision was made. So I expect her to be tenacious and just throw a lot of nasty haymakers and mostly focus on COVID-19. Pence will not be interrupting, so he's going to have to grin and bear it. And then he'll have to defend himself, but then he'll have to throw counter punches. You can't just play defense for 90 minutes. And if a COVID attack comes, he's going to have to turn that back into an economic conversation about Biden-Harris being for the shutdowns. They're very weak on that. He also has to turn every conversation into that populist conservative sweet spot. The no new wars, manufacturing jobs, no sanctuary cities, tough on China, lower drug prices. If he can do that and then turn it around on policy on Kamala, because remember, she hasn't a answered any questions on policy for the last two months. She's going to be shaky. She'll mm -hmm. be well prepared, but there will be some shaky moments for her. Um, Greg, I was thinking back to the Kavanaugh hearings, and of course, that's where Senator Kamala Harris really, I think she was planning to run for president um, even before that, but I think that's what really kind of get, got her into the news and into the headlines. The difference with Pence from Kavanaugh is that Kavanaugh was trying to be confirmed as a United States Supreme Court justice. He was trying to get through that as best he could, not argue too much, but had, having to defend himself. This is a very different situation for Kamala Harris tomorrow night. I agree. First, let's uh, th this pe plexiglass divider. It reminds me of going into a liquor store in a really bad neighborhood, <laughs> like when all of the cashiers are just behind this thing, and you have to slip the money through. Uh, don't you send guys into those stores? You don't I go in yourself. Often. I usually wait in the back <laughs> of my limo. Uh, but you know, I think. Um, okay, so we're looking at these two candidates, and we're looking at it in a different light because the, it's a more significant debate given the age of the candidates. Pence. Looks like he could be president. He looks like he jumped, off, he jumped right off a Franklin Mint coin. But she, she seems still unsure of her own abilities. She still has that giggle thing going. But she has one advantage, and the advantage is Trump. Trump is essentially a buffet of eight different types of food made out of Trump. So when she <laughs> doesn't have an idea or a, a thing to say, all she has to do is run over to the buffet, get some Trump au gratin or some Trump fries, or some Trump scalloped potatoes, mm. and then come back. She will never run out of stuff to say because all she has to do is go back to Trump, and I think that's what she's going to do. Um, earlier today, Juan, I couldn't remember the name of the candidate that Pence faced off with in 2016. I was thinking Keene, Kane, Kane, Keen. It was Kane, yeah. Senator Tim Kane of Virginia. How can Pence and Kamala Harris make this debate a little bit more memorable? Well, Dana, you know, so much of this has to do with, is it going to move the polls? Is it going to make a difference? And I don't know that that's the case, but I think a lot of people are going to tune in because, as Greg and Jesse point out, you've got two 70-year-olds, one with COVID, and there's a real possibility that one of these two people that we're going to watch tomorrow night uh, could become president of the United States, a higher likelihood than normal. But what strikes me is, again, I don't think that anybody's tuning in and say, oh, I'm going to change my vote based on the outcome of this uh, debate. Right now, though, what we're seeing is that the polls had been static, really, through the conventions and up to that first debate. But over the last week since the debate, wow, those polls have started to move. Mm -hmm. And they have not moved in a good direction for President Trump. I think now we have seen 
that the, the debate really did have some impact. And I'm not sure that this coming debate tomorrow night will have that kind of political impact, but I do think it's going to have a big audience. Martha, Trump is, as Greg was saying, there's the Trump buffet, and Trump runs very hot, and Pence runs a little bit cooler. Uh, Biden reads as a much older person, and she reads as a much younger person um, to Biden. So how, you know, is that an advantage for her going into tomorrow night? You know, I, I think that it is, and I think that they both have to be more policy focused. I talked to a bunch of college kids in U Utah here this morning, and they all said, gee, I just really hope that this debate is more substantive mm. than the last one. And I think this is the opportunity for Mike Pence to really drill down on the achievements of the Trump presidency uh, and to lay those out very clearly. And he's going to have to hold Kamala Harris's feet to the fire on things like fracking, Medicare yes. for all. She has flip-flopped on a number of issues since she was a primary candidate, uh, and I would look for him to try to nail down uh, where she really stands on those things, like packing the court, which uh, to which she said absolutely when she was asked about it just a few short months ago. So, um, yeah, I mean, they are going to be the more vibrant uh, team, I think, mm -hmm. uh, from what we have seen uh, in the prior debate. And uh, the next debate is uh, also one that we're going to be yeah. sitting on the edge of our seats for at this point. <laughs> I think that Pence will definitely pivot to the economy and um, prosecute that case very well for the president.